Welcome to Chaos City, baby. Welcome to Winnipeg Jets Hockey, where when they should win, they don't win, and when they shouldn't win, they win. Unbelievable what's been going on the last week or so here. Two games that the Jets could have won with the Sharks and um, obviously against Minnesota. Two games where they, you know, outplayed their opponent for the most part, but could not put them away. In today's game, the Jets got up early and kind of blew, just blew multiple leads. And we go to overtime and the Jets win. We're gonna hop on into it. We're gonna look at the highlights. We're gonna do all that stuff in just a second. But before we do that, leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Yeah, been a really weird week here on the channel. I haven't had a lot of time to make videos, but we are back and we are starting with this game. Um, what a weird one here in Florida. The Florida Panthers are on the second half of a back-to-back -back and the Jets are, you know, just, kind of hanging around they had a few days off and i thought they were going to come out here early and they kind of got pumped a little bit i don't know if it weren't for connor hellebuck there in the first period i think that it could be a different story getting out shot quite quite bad actually but it would be mark shifley on the power play from a really nice pass from blake wheeler putting the jets up one to nothing Later on in the first period, it would be Nikolai Ehlers scoring his sixth of the year, assisted from Vlad Nemestikov, beauty goal, Nino Niederreiter picking up an assist as well. The two pickups from the trade deadline chipping in on that one. Good for Nick, he's needed a goal, been struggling lately, and the Jets all of a sudden up two to nothing. This is exactly what they needed, right? You know, getting outshot, but they're still finding a way to put the puck in the back of the net. And then a minute and a half later, here comes Matthew Kachuk on the power play, and he scores to break our hearts. But that is okay, because we have Vlad Nemestikov, a guy that a lot of people didn't love uh, when, obviously, the Jets traded for him. And I thought it was a good pickup. Uh, I thought the Jets should have done more, obviously, and I get that's why they were upset. But Vlad scores his seventh of the year, first as a Jet, on the power play. Good for him. Uh, I really like Vlad Nemestikov, and we're going to see him again a little later on, and we'll get into that in just a minute. Early on in the second, the Panthers will make it 3-2, but guess who, again, it's Vlad Nemestikov, the guy that we just talked about, scoring 5-on-5 five five here, beautiful pass from Nikolai Ehlers, right over to Vlad Nemestikov, and just like that, it is a 4-2 game, ladies and gentlemen, what could go wrong? What could possibly go wrong? Well, a doomsday situation is kind of what happened, and I hope it's not as bad as uh, I think it could be, but Josh Morrissey leaves the game late in the second period, comes out in the third, and is just hobbling out there, obviously struggling, and goes out after only one shift, did not return to the game, and is doubtful for the Tampa Bay Lightning game tomorrow as the Jets play it back-to-back, -back, and that is terrible. Josh Morrissey, the guy that's been putting the team on his back all season, goes down with an injury and I really hope it's not serious. He was grabbing his hip. It didn't look good. It was a non-contact injury. You now Jets already missing Dubois and uh, you know there's someone else we got to talk about in a minute too. I'll get to that at the end of the game. Just not ideal right now for Winnipeg and I yeah guys losing Josh Morrissey would be a massive blow to this team. And to add to all the fun that we're having here the Florida Panthers would have an incredible third period as Mark Stahl would score his third of the year and Matthew Kachuk his second of the game 30th of the year and just like that we got a tie game and we are headed off to overtime folks and after multiple chances here for Florida in overtime Mark Shifley just you know what says you know what we're not losing this game we win Jets win and it's a 5-4 win that the Jets needed so so very badly in the worst way a big two points they now move six points ahead of Calgary, who really got goalied there by John Gibson and the Anaheim Ducks the other night. This was a huge win for Winnipeg, a game that they definitely didn't deserve to win, a game where they looked very tired, and a game where they got worked by a team on the second half of a back-to-back. -back. But Winnipeg does come through with a big win, and a game that will definitely help them in the standings, and uh, definitely takes a blow at Calgary's chances. Now, after the game, uh, I keep hearing the Sportsnet guys saying, oh yeah, uh, Adam Lowry left the game too. I didn't even notice, but Adam Lowry, I guess, left the game, and he's doubtful too for tomorrow's game. So now, the Winnipeg Jets are missing Adam Lowry, Josh Morrissey, uh, Cole Perfetti, obviously, and Pierre-Luc Dubois. So now the Jets are just, you know, missing everybody here, so... 
They're gonna need Nemestikov to keep stepping up, need Ryder to keep playing good, Shifley to obviously, you know, keep playing the way he did tonight. That was a way better game for Mark Shifley uh, than we've seen as of late. So good for Mark. Uh, I love seeing that. Just refused to lose this game. And um, yeah, there, that was a good game from Shifley. Now, I know you guys definitely have seen it from the thumbnail, but this was the funniest picture I've ever seen. I, I had to, you know, pause uh, Zach's TV from the Nolan Hockey Podcast. I was over there watching the game tonight. I had to pause this because Blake Wheeler out there with the craziest face of all time. I loved it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. This was my favorite part of the game for sure. Shout out to Blake for uh, creating prime meme content, but... Uh, yeah, that one definitely going to be a staple here on the channel for the future. You know, lots of guys had really great games tonight, but I don't think it's any surprise that Vlad Nemestikov is winning the Big Ol' Shining Star Award. Congratulations and welcome to the Jets, Vlad Nemestikov. He had a big game today. Uh, really loving him. Four games played, five points now. Two goals, three assists for him since joining the Jets. Been a really nice addition. Reminds me a lot of how uh, Lee Stepniak was when he joined the Jets there in the 2014-2015 season at the trade deadline. Just, you know, same kind of player, same kind of role guy. Uh, I really like him. Good for Vlad. Overall, to sum it up, this was just a weird game. You know, Jets showed flashes of greatness, and then they showed flashes of not-so-greatness. And uh, I'm happy they pulled out the two points, though. I will take it. They definitely deserved a uh, couple points in that Sharks game, a couple points in that Minnesota game, but ultimately just weren't able to finish. So good for the Jets for picking up these two points. Um, I am concerned what the lineup's going to look like tomorrow against the Tampa Bay Lightning, as Josh Morrissey likely won't play and Adam Lowry won't play. Uh, so I'm thinking, you know, we might see a Logan Stanley, Neil Pionk pairing that we kind of saw a little bit of, um, uh, a lot on the back half of this game when Morrissey obviously left the game. And I'm thinking, you know, Vlad Nemestikov likely is going to be the 2C again. Stenland probably moves up to the third line center and then probably see Gustafson as the 4C. Do I think that Vili could maybe get a call up? Possibly. I don't really know though at this point of the year. I think that bonus would probably just be more likely to give a guy like Capo Bianco the power play time and just do that. Or, you know, even get Sandberg back in the lineup. Like, I don't know. They have to get Sandberg playing. Like, Stanley is, you know, just, just really not that good. Uh, I don't know. He, he just out to lunch all the time. There, there was a three-on-one for Florida today, and I know he couldn't really do much. It was mostly Neil Pionk's fault for, you know, pinching in and creating a three-on-one for the Panthers. But man, Stanley didn't do himself any favors. I, I, I won't have a clip for it, but man, oh, tough to watch. But overall, I mean, hey, Jets pick up a big two. They're going to need to really pull it out here against Tampa tomorrow on the second half of a back-to-back. -back. I'm really hoping that they're okay. Tampa is obviously on a back-to-back -back as well. So hopefully the Jets can slug another one out and really distance themselves from Calgary and try to make the playoffs uh, because that would be kind of fun if, if they were able to do that. I'm a little worried about Calgary's schedule as we've uh, looked over already, but I think the Jets can do it. They just have to you know prove that they can win and this stretch, uh, they're definitely going to have to prove it. But with that, everybody, I am going to hop on out of here. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. And I will see you guys in the next video, maybe tomorrow. We'll see what happens. And uh, yeah, have a good night, guys. Go Jets, go. Bye-bye.